Hi, it's David with ScreenBeam. In this video, we're going to give a quick demo of the ScreenBeam 1000 EDU that you see connected here. It's our latest ScreenBeam that's designed and priced for our education customers. It supports any kind of device, uh, whether it be in a classroom, in a conference room, in a media center, in a multi-purpose room, anywhere where you want to be able to connect and get from your smaller screen up to the big screen and really show you how this is a uh, best-in-class uh, contactless experience for your teachers, for your administrators, anyone who wants to be able to do what we're going to demonstrate today. This video is meant to be a quick run-through of how to get connected with these different devices. And along the way, I'll also show you a few EDU-specific examples of why, and it'll show you why ScreenBeam is the best enhanced wireless display solution on the market today. Um, we're going to start with Windows 10. Um, in Windows 10, we're going to be demonstrating the use of Miracast. And with Windows 10 and Miracast, you can select Windows K, uh, which is an easy shortcut to get to, or you can also use the Action Center. And I'm going to select the screen beam that's showing up here in the top left-hand corner. When I select that, it gives me the option to enter a PIN. So I'm going to enter my PIN, 1879, and click Connect. And that's it. That's the end of our demo. No, not really. But really, that shows you how easy it is. And if you're thinking about this when it comes to training teachers, uh, training administrators, training students on how to use this, it, you don't want a lot of complexity. You want to be able to show them that this is built into the operating system. These are all native connections. And that happens with all of these devices that you see here. And it makes it really quick and easy to be able to train teachers on how this functions in the classroom. So now that I've, I'm connected, I can show you a couple of different things in here. Um, if I want to be able to use extended screen mode, I can do that by hitting Windows P and be able to switch instantly to extended screen. So now that I'm on extended screen mode, uh, I can be showing content on my screen here and showing something different to my students. So if I'm working with a small group of students, if I have them um, doing some content, on, the, on a PowerPoint that's showing, I can still be working with a smaller group of students in my classroom and not be able to show everything that's on my screen the whole time. I can quickly switch back to uh, duplicate mode or mirroring mode. And now I have the ability to do things like if a student is sharing their device. So in, in this case, maybe a student is sharing their screen and they're working on something in Whiteboard. Um, as a teacher, I don't have to go to them and go to their desk to interact with what they're doing. If they're sharing their screen, I could actually have them, if I'm using a touch screen environment, which this is, Windows thinks this is a wired environment. And because I have the USB cable plugged in, I can still interact uh, with their content that they have on their screen. And everything that I'm doing here is showing up on their device. right? And so I still have the flexibility to be able to use my touch screens in a wireless environment. And that's one thing that's really important to you when you're looking at solutions that offer wireless display is do they still give me the full classroom functionality or do I have to buy an extra computer to connect to the screen? Um, do I still have the full functionality of my touch screens in that environment? And we give you the best experience, hands down. No one does this better than ScreenBeam to be able to use this in a wireless environment if you're using touch screens. And so think about that as you're evaluating these devices uh, moving forward. We're not doing this with software. We're being able to do this all inside of uh, a native connection with, with Windows. And so that's something to, to think about as you move forward. So now I'm going to uh, talk about a couple other things a little bit later, but I'm going to disconnect here by just clicking on the Action Center and the Disconnect button. And now you can see I'm back to my screen beam uh, window. And I'm going to connect with this Mac OS device. And the Mac OS is connected on the same uh, wireless uh, Wi-Fi signal as the screen beam. And so I'm going to select my screen beam again, the same name. My code comes up. And I'm going to click OK. The Mac is not a touch screen. Um, and you can see quickly that I'm going to be connected to, uh, to the Mac OS device uh, wirelessly. So now um, I've got full connection. I have the ability to open up content that I have that I want to be able to share. Uh, in this case, um, you know, I have uh, open up the ScreenBeam website. And I'll jump, jump, jump right in there. Um, so you can see any, any of that content that I have showing or that I have playing be able to look at different, uh, different solutions. Everything is showing up in real time. And again, I can do this in extended screen mode as well on the Mac OS. So again, I have the full flexibility of my device um, that I want to be able to have in a wired or a wireless environment. 
I'm going to stop the AirPlay there and select that. More of our teachers or more of our IT folks are also getting requests to get the mobile devices involved in the classroom. In this case, I'm going to show it on an iPad because it's a little bit bigger screen. But if you want to be able to take this, this device into a classroom or into a meeting room, I want to be able to still share content from here as well. And you'll notice I haven't done anything to the screen beam to connect. Everything is set up and ready to go. So I'm going to go in here and click screen mirroring in my Apple in the iOS menu. And again, I select the screen beam 95F1 in this case. Uh, what, Mac OS, what iOS is doing is it's setting that up. It's giving me <clears throat> that connection. And I just enter that same pin. And I click Connect. Now, <clears throat> why is this important with uh, an iOS environment? Well, there is a lot of robustness that you can get out of your handheld devices when you're doing, um, when you're doing screen mirroring. In this case, even though I'm doing mirroring, you can see everything showing up in, in real time. I can open up my camera, show different content things like that, maybe I have my PowerPoint that I want to be able to share uh, with my class, or maybe I'm doing a presentation in a conference room. I still want to be able to do that, and I have everything pulled up here. Now I've got my, my speaker notes, my content, all my slides. I can switch back and forth between slides here. You can see I can quickly and easily do that. But then I maybe want to be able to use my pen. In this case, I'm showing the photosynthesis formula, uh, water plus carbon dioxide plus light and I can show uh, what the formula is and how that comes out. And I can have that content still, again, being able to do all this in real time just on my iOS device. And now, again, you can see that I'm in extended mode. But if I end this, end this slideshow, uh, I can go right back to mirroring the content that I had uh, on my iPad. Now I can go back and present other content. Maybe I want to open up a YouTube video, uh, share content there. I can do that really quickly and really easily within uh, within my within my device environment. Okay, so now I'm going to disconnect and click stop mirroring. <clears throat> now I'm going to show this on a Android environment. So if I do have an Android device that I also want to be able to connect, again I can use something like Smart View, which is this is on the Galaxy uh, solution. I can click mirror my screen. Again, that pin comes up. I can click accept, and now. Once again, I have the ability to share content from my small screen to the big screen in the room. Once it connects here, there we go. Um, now I have content available. I can again open up PowerPoint. Um, in this case, I'm showing a screen beam presentation. I click my slideshow. And now, again, once again, I have uh, extended mode, essentially. I'm using my content being shown on the big screen and now I have my speaker notes, all my other content available uh, right here on my small screen and I can go through my slides uh, and be able to share uh, content with whoever I'm there. So if I'm doing this again in a classroom or in a, in a conference room, I have the flexibility to be able to show that really quickly and really easily. So now I'm going to end that session and jump into the last device which I'll demonstrate, which is a Chromebook device. And again, a Chrome environment, we know that there's a lot of Chromebook environments out there where you want content to be able to be shared from those Chrome, uh, Chrome environments. I'm going to click on the cast, and again, this is select connected to the same Wi-Fi as my screen beam. I'm going to click on that screen and click share, and again, instantly I'm connected with that device. So now I've run through each of those devices, and again on the Chromebook, uh, all the things you would expect to have in the Chrome environment, being able to share content uh, from this, and this is a low-cost uh, Chrome device. And again, you get that experience that you would expect um, in there to be able to share content really quickly and easily. The other thing that we offer with ScreenBeam 1000, which comes with it, is Classroom Commander, and you can look up more information on that. I'd be happy to, to we'd be happy to share that with you. But that allows you to connect up to 50 Chromebook devices and one teacher device to the screen meme at one time. And that gives you the flexibility, again, in that environment to be able to kind of orchestrate what your students are doing and to be able to orchestrate um, not allowing them to share the entire time, but when you're ready for them to share, uh, you have the ability as the teacher to select their device and share that to the front of the room. Uh, I can also do that with up to 50 Windows devices at one time. And that, again, comes with the screen beam. We've got lots of videos and things like that that you can see on ScreenBeam.com. That, in a nutshell, is 
our demonstration of all these devices being able to connect really quickly and really easily in an education environment. If you want more information on ScreenBeam, we would love you to contact us at sales at screenbeam.com to be able to get a demo in your hands and be able to try this out in your environment. But what we really encourage you to do is really evaluate looking at ScreenBeam as the core of a modern classroom. Being able to make sure that that is where you start with and then you can build around that the devices that you choose, the screens that you choose, even the furniture that you choose because you are, you've set up a really solid wireless display environment that allows you to have that flexibility, that agility that we expect to have in the teachers, for teachers in our classrooms, teachers and students in our classrooms today. Um, again, if you have any questions, please contact, contact us at sales at screenbeam.com. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm back. One other feature that I didn't get to mention uh, that I wanted to make sure you, you knew about was the ability to do digital signage. In ScreenBeam, uh, as the, the, the ScreenBeam 1000, you do have the ability to turn on digital signage as an option. And what that does is it makes your screen that you have in your room or, again, in the media center, other locations, can be a digital signage player without having to add additional hardware. Um, inside of ScreenBeam in the CMS protocol, which is our central management system, which, again, comes at no extra cost uh, to ScreenBeam, Beam, you do have the ability at the IT level to turn on digital signage. And in there, when you see I'm going to apply that right now, uh, you'll notice in just a second that my screen now is still a ScreenBeam uh, Connect screen, uh, but my digital signage option uh, will come on here, and you'll be able to see that now I can use this as a digital signage player. You'll notice it runs in a couple of different modes. One is a framed mode for the digital signage. The other is a mode that runs in full screen, and that just opens up the full screen to, uh, to screen beam. In an education environment, this could be used to show maybe a calendar of the day, uh, maybe a video that you want uh, deployed to all the classrooms, and all that has to be done is the screen just has to be turned on, and that content would be playing. You can play it in a loop, as you've shown, as you've shown here, or again, you can manage that content as you need to. Um, all of that is really nice because then I can instantly, then when I'm ready to teach as the teacher, I can just go in, click connect, select my screen beam receiver, enter the pin in this case, and click connect. And then I am now back to my instruction. And then when I go back and disconnect, all that comes back on again if I want it to. So didn't want to didn't want to leave out that feature, and also didn't want to leave out our support uh, team that is second to none. You can email for support at support at screenbeam.com, or again our sales email, which you'll see in just a second at sales at screenbeam.com. Thanks for your time. Have a great day.